Hi folks, how can we easily figure out what size hole to drill and where to drill it so that we can machine this part? Because you can't machine sharp inside corners like this with round tools. Let's take a look at how we can quickly do that in Fusion 360. Welcome to the Fusion Friday. I'm gonna go back into my sketch, right click, edit sketch. I'm going to hit L for line. I'm going to place the line from here. And I'm going to drag it all the way out here, sort of in no man's land. Hit escape. And I'm going to click that line once and hit X. See how it changes that to a dotted line or construction line? So if you take a look, I can grab the end of that line, the white tip, and I can move it anywhere. What I want to do is lock that line along that point there. So I'll say coincident constraint. I'll pick the line first. And then I'll pick the dot right there. So what that does is it locks it. I can move it in and out, but that doesn't matter in this case. What's most importantly is I can't move it side to side. Now I'm going to hit C for circle. Sketch a circle out here. And I'm going to dimension it 1 8 of an inch because that's the drill bit I'd like to use. We'll see. Maybe it's a little too big. Now, I want that circle to move along this path. So I'm going to also use a coincident constraint and pay attention because with circles it can get tricky. I don't want to click the ring out here. I want to click the blue dot or the white dot, excuse me, in the middle and then I'll click my line. So now I've got a circle, oops, there we go, that I can move along this line. Now what you could do is I could say, you know, let's get the circle really close. I could use a tangent constraint. So click tangent and I want the circle circumference to be tangent to do I have a point here? Nope. Uh, let's see here. Oh, coincident would actually work, sorry. I want the coincident, the circle to be coincident with there. But I don't really want that because I want there to be a little bit of wiggle room here, a little bit of cushion. So I'm actually just going to fudge this. I'm going to hit D for dimension click the center point, click the circle's center point, and there's a little glitch in Fusion right now. It doesn't give you a preview, but if I click once, you'll see it is going to place a dimension. And now I can just type in, say, 0 0.225. That's yeah, not enough. 0.23. That's perfect. So see how that's going to go a little bit past it? Maybe we'll come in a little bit more. 2.25. Nope, that's, that's got to be 0.23. But the real question is, I want to use a 3 16 end mill. Is that end mill going to be able to sneak up in there and get to that geometry? Let's take a look. C for circle, drag out, and I'll type 0.1875. So there's my 1 8 or 3 16 end mill. I'm going to drag it in here so it's a little bit closer. And now I'm going to click tangent. Notice I dragged a box here so that nothing is selected right now. De I basically deselected everything. So I'll click Tangent. I'll click the blue tool effectively. And then I'll click this line right here. See how it just locked my tool along that edge? So what's going to happen is I'm going to run, this is basically my end mill. And I'm going to run that end mill all the way over. And if we take a look, what's going to happen is that is going to hit right here. So let's just create a second tangent constraint, which is going to lock it into the corner. Tangent here to here. So if we zoom in, we can see that little sliver is what proves that my big end mill is going to be able to clean up this line after I first drill my 1 8 inch Mickey Mouse corner 0.23 inches out from the center. So again, this is what's cool. You know, if, for instance, if we were using a quarter inch end mill, you would see as soon as I get over to there, oh, I'm close, but if you zoom in, technically there's not enough room. Technically the quarter inch tool couldn't get there. So we'd have to make that Mickey Mouse ear a little bit bigger and that's always not a good thing. Likewise, let's say we had a point uh, or 1 16th inch drill we could say 0 0.3, nope, 
0.26, and then let's say we were going to use a 1 8 inch end mill. Awesome. That should do it just fine. If we zoom in, uh, technically not, but that's a, that is a tiny sliver. So I hope you guys enjoyed. hope you guys learned something. Take care. Next week, we're going to have a beginner's cam Fusion Friday. Uh, looking forward to it, folks. Take care. See you soon.